Hello, welcome to this uh, Pewdata tutorial video. And in this video, we will cover um, some of the idioms you use all the time to send data flow and to handle it. In particular, we will have to look at a gate, which is blocking or allowing values or data to flow, and a separator, which separates to a certain condition. These are functions you use very often and need, and we have to look at them. The first object we are looking at is the spigot. And this is just a gate. Spigot works like this. It's receiving um, some data, numbers or messages on its left inlet and outputs it. Print is called this for output. And it just prints it to its output. But it does only so if its right input gets a value 1 and higher, and if it gets a 0, it's just closing. So we take a message 1, sorry, like this, and a message 0, and we connect those to spigot, right? And if we say spigot please be open, then it's open. If we say spigot close, it's just closing, and this is very, very helpful because now we can do things like this. For example, you remember the expression and we can say if, for example, the incoming value $f1 is larger than 10, send a 1, else send a 0. And then I just make a number box to display what is happening. We can do this. Now, if our number is larger than 10, it sends out a 1, so our gate is open. But as soon as the number is smaller, it closes the gate and nothing can go through. So there's a very handy way, for example, to gate something. Spigot receives a 0 or up and can open and close the gate. Another helpful GUI object I will introduce now, shift command T, is the toggle. You can connect it. And the toggle is nothing more than a checkbox, which is visually representing uh, if it sends out a zero or a one. If we connect a number box, we will see this. If the checkbox is true, it's outputting a one, one time. If the checkbox is false, it's outputting a zero. So that's basically working as an on-off switch and if I delete this, you can use this um, to manually open and close a gate. Open it by sending the one, it's working, close it by sending a zero. Another handy object is the Moses and Moses splits messages according to a value. Let's say 10. We feed in a number and what it does, it's outputting two separate streams. The first one is 10 and below, and as soon as it proceeds the given argument, it starts to separate, to split to the next outlet. That's very handy to um, separate different data stream according to different value ranges, for example. and by sending a number, let's say a message, let's take one for example, to the cold inlet on the right side, we just exchange this argument. So the 10 now becomes a one, we don't see it, but if we execute it, we see, okay, as soon as we go below one, it's feeding out to the left outlet and now it's feeding back to the right outlet. And Moses also does floating point numbers, so we can say 10.5. And now we need to shift and click as soon as we go below 10.5. Uh, let's do it quicker like this. Um, we see, okay, this is working left, 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 left. 10 point, uh, we are approximating and 10.5, we're switching. So Moses also works with floating point numbers. There are also um, math operators like comparison things like you can say equal and those always 
output zero or one, like true or false. So now if the left inlet is corresponding to the right one, it will output a one, otherwise it will output a false. And I just um, put a print as well, so you see that is outputting a message all the time. So of course that's false because 15 equals zero is not true. But as soon as we set it to, let's say, 20, and we reach the 20, we output a, a one for, okay, now the argument is true. That also works for greater, equal, or less, equal, or, and, and, of course, the or. <laughs> 